In this video, I will cover differences between VGT versus Triple Q, which are two most popular growth ETFs. I can tell you right off the bat that there is no good or bad ETF. It is a matter of knowing differences between VGT and Triple Q and making a investment decision that suits your needs best. Both funds are well-established and large ETFs managed by respectable investment powerhouses. Triple Q had a slight head start and enjoys higher popularity among investors. The assets under management for Triple Q are almost four times bigger compared to VGT. Triple Q has a higher expense ratio compared to VGT. Still, expenses are pretty low for both of them. Let's start with indices that VGT and Triple Q track. After all, this is where the performance differences, either past or future, originate. VGT tracks the performance of US companies in the technology sector. For this reason, VGT excludes any firm outside of the officially defined tax sector. For instance, you will not find Amazon, which is consumer cyclical, or Google communication, Meta communication again, or Tesla consumer cyclical in VGT's portfolio. Triple Q tracks performance of NASDAQ 100 largest non-financial companies. This means that Triple Q does not hold stocks traded on rival exchanges. For instance, Triple Q doesn't have New York Stock Exchange listed Oracle or Salesforce in its portfolio. We can argue that such approach is arbitrary and restricts Triple Q's opportunities. We will come back to this issue in a second. Next is the size of portfolio companies in VGT versus Triple Q. Unlike Triple Q, VGT gives you some exposure to mid-cap as well as small-cap companies. Conversely, Triple Q gives you exposure only to giant or large-cap companies. Although the VGT's exposure to mid- and small-cap companies of 8% is very small at best. Next, let's take a quick look at sector allocations. Due to tracking technology sector only, VGT's holdings are IT companies. This is not so for Triple Q. For instance, Triple Q has a decent allocation to consumer cyclical sector Amazon or Tesla. Likewise, Google and Meta gets the lion's share of communication services sector allocation. Wall Street uses Global Industry Classification Standard or GICS. It groups companies into 11 sectors and it's very particular about what classifies a technology company. Arguably, there's no other company like Google or Meta that leverages technology most and yet here we are. Next is portfolio concentration. In total, VGT tracks about 315 companies. Here are the top 10 holdings of VGT. You immediately see a high concentration of assets in just two stocks, Apple and Microsoft. They account for a whopping 43% of the fund's total assets. The top 10 holdings account for 61%. If your investment goal is diversification, that's not a good sign. Conversely, Triple Q has 101 stocks in its portfolio, including two classes of Google stock. That is more than three times less than the number of holdings of VGT. And yet, Triple Q has a much lower concentration at the top compared to VGT. We see that Apple and Microsoft account for 18%. Triple Q's top 10 holdings take up 46% of Triple Q's assets. In some sense, Triple Q looks more diversified compared to VGT. Next, let's take a look at historical performance. Although historical performance doesn't guarantee future returns, there's a lot that we can learn from it. The first thing to notice is that both VGT and Triple Q have low turnover ratios. And this is not surprising since the both funds they use buy and hold strategy. Although VGT slightly leads with a lower turnover ratio. Low turnover ratio means that there, there were fewer stocks bought and sold throughout the year. And high turnover ratio can lead to higher expenses and can create a drag on ETF's performance. As for the total returns, VGT and Triple Q performed more or less on par for the past 15 years. Of course, there were some periods of outperformance by VGT, especially for the past 5 or 10 years. This is impressive given that VGT does not include such high flyers as Tesla, Google and Meta. High concentration of Apple and Microsoft allowed VGT to match or even surpass Triple Q's returns. As for risk-adjusted returns, the sharp ratio for VGT was better across 3, 5 and 10-year periods. 
To be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of risk-adjusted returns. Many prominent investors, including Harvard Marks, they view investment risk as a probability of a permanent loss of capital. And uh, to calculate that risk, you must have judgment and forecast of future earnings. And Morin Portfolio views this exercise as something difficult and something, something hard to do. Instead, it focuses on a low-hanging fruit that is easy to get, and that is the price volatility. So I would be very careful with risk-adjusted returns and not let them cloud your decision-making. Okay, so which one is the best choice, especially for a long-term investor? Unfortunately, there's no clear-cut answer. And the best that we can do is to look at differences between VGT versus Triple Q and see under what circumstances one or the other will perform better. First off, VGT high concentration in Apple and Microsoft is a bit worrying. Such high concentration is a double-edged sword. If for any reason these two stocks underperform, Triple Q may outshine VGT. The opposite is true. So if you're looking for diversification, VGT may not be the best choice. Triple Q provides a smoother distribution of weights among stocks without being too top heavy. Next is the stock selection preference. Triple Q gives you exposure to magnificent seven stocks. Conversely, VGT excludes four of them, such as Amazon, Meta, Google, and Tesla. So if you want to hold all these seven stocks, VGT is a game not for you. But if you want pure play on technology sector, VGT is a better choice. As we saw, Triple Q provides exposure to other sectors besides tech. For instance, it has holdings in Costco, PepsiCo, which are consumer defensive stocks. Likewise, Triple Q holds Amgen, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, and Gilead Sciences, given a healthcare exposure. The other consideration is exposure to mid and small cap stocks. VGT provides some with 8% allocation to small and micro-cap companies compared to none for triple Q. 8% is of course a lip service to that. If you want exposure to small cap tech stocks, there are better ETF options out there. So as we see, it's not black and white. It's not like VGT is good or triple Q is bad. It is a matter of knowing trade-offs between these two funds and making the best investment decision based on that. But let me give you my personal opinion on VGT versus Triple Q. I'm not a big fan of top-heavy funds like VGT. If I want a high allocation to, say, Apple or Microsoft, I can just get it myself with a click of a button. So this makes VGT too dependent on performance of just two stocks. On the other hand, I really like VGT's low expense ratio. As for Triple Q, its exposure to magnificent seven stocks, that's, that's all what made the difference for its historical performance. In my view, the big tech companies will likely outperform the general economy and the stock market. So if you do not agree with this view, likely Triple Q or even VGT is not a good choice for you. I also like how Triple Q focuses on large cap stocks and cuts off all the small caps that are traded on NASDAQ. Again, here I'm assuming that the big large cap companies will outperform small cap ones. And uh, again, if you do not agree with this view, Triple Q could be a bad choice. After reaching their all-time highs for the most part, the magnificent seven stocks may become volatile short term. I personally do not care for price fluctuations because volatility is not a measure of risk to me. But it could become a risk for someone, or like a timing risk, who cannot wait out dips and need cash quick. So this could be a consideration. On the other hand, I do not like how Triple Q limits its exposure to NASDAQ traded stocks only. I wish there were other stocks from other exchanges included, but it is what it is. On another note, there is a Triple QM, which is a sibling of Triple Q. Triple QM does everything that Triple Q, but at a lower expense ratio of 0.15%. The, the thing is with a triple Q is that it is organized as a unit investment trust. And this is how many ETFs were structured back in the early days. And being a unit investment trust, 
This prohibits Triple Q in engaging at, in securities lending or reinvesting dividends, among many other things. Conversely, Triple QM is a standard ETF company and it can engage in securities lending to earn fees and lower its expense ratios. But because Triple QM was launched very recently in 2020, it's still gathering steam and its net asset base is lower compared to Triple Q. And for this reason, it's spreads when you trade shares of triple qm can be somewhat wider so what are your thoughts on vgt versus triple q do you prefer one over another for some reason please let me know in the comment section please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you learned something new today i will have more content about personal finance and investing thank you for watching